Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord have mercy. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. 
Then the Lord sent serpents, poisonous serpents, among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Good job with the clocks. Everybody feeling okay? Yeah? I mean, it's it's a little, you know, it takes a little time to get so, um, clergy typically, at least the ones I know, there's this thing called the Sunday afternoon nap. Very important. I recommend that to everyone today. Um, you know, last week I mentioned the church that I grew up in and kind of what it looked like. I want to mention another memory from that place today, and it has to do with Christmas and the fact that as a little kid, there was a part of me, as much as I was excited about Christmas, when it came to Christmas at church, I was not so excited about it. So, like, I guess it's because at this church we didn't have enough children to do, like, a full-on nativity pageant kind of thing. So the tradition was this. You were given scripture from uh, the birth story to memorize and recite in front of the church. Now, I will tell you right now, there were not nearly as many people in the church as there are here today. And that's no jab at the church I grew up in, but it was small. But it felt like I was speaking to I don't know, the largest assembly of peace people possible. And like, I just vividly remember just so, uh, being so nervous about it and apprehensive about it. And I'm sure y'all, it was like literally one line of scripture, but it felt like the whole story that I had to, t- and just being in front of everyone and shaking. Now you may be, go- well, you do this all the time. It's true. You know, this is, a, this is kind of ironic and interesting how God works, that now I stand up in front of people a lot and sometimes talk way too much. Um, but I, I used to share this a lot with, with my students. Like, I was, the, I was the student in high school who, like, would just sit, like, I took, I paid attention. I took good notes, but I rarely spoke. You know, I was the same way in college. I rarely spoke. Um, and then I get to seminary because that's where I feel I'm called to be and they're like, oh, you're going to talk now. (laughs) Your time has come. Um, And I remember being in seminary and getting an assignment for a class. Um, It may have been New Testament. I'm not sure. I don't think it was a preaching class. But anyway, we were given a text to memorize and speak in front of the whole, like, proclaiming the gospel, and, um, and just remember that, that memory from childhood. But, so why am I mentioning this today? I feel like I kind of 
felt part of the reason that when I, when I landed in the Episcopal Church, I'm like, these are my people. Because we don't memorize a ton of scripture, am I right? <laughs> I mean, it's very interesting, and we have that reputation, but I would argue, y'all, on a Sunday morning, you get as much, if not more, scripture than anybody. That's a fact, right? That is significant. We just don't memorize a lot of it, you know? But, and maybe you're different, maybe you do, but, but I'm guessing if you do, in fact, memorize some scripture, today might include that verse that you've memorized, right? You used to see this a lot at sporting events. What happened with this whole movement where you would see those signs, John 3.16, right? Um, I haven't seen one of those in a while. Um, but this might be a line that some of you know by heart, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life, John 3.16, right? Here's what I want to say today and almost every day when it comes to scripture. Pulling a single line out is usually not that helpful at least in a sense of understanding the entire, like, what's the context of what's going on here? Is there more to this conversation? Yes, there is. What is the context of today's gospel? I think they call this crickets. (laughs) I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but it's not in here. This is from the conversation Jesus is having with this guy named Nicodemus. Who's Nicodemus? Uh, Nicodemus is a Pharisee, who, very devout Pharisee, and he really knows his stuff. Let's just say that. Okay, and Nicodemus is attracted maybe to some of the things Jesus is saying. Anyway, he goes to Jesus at nighttime. Why does he go to him at nighttime? It's interesting that in this gospel, Jesus will then go on to refer to light and darkness, right? Um, When you're exposed in the light, as you are for all the world to see, that's uncomfortable. I don't want to have that happen, and you may not either. It's disconcerting. I don't want all my flaws exposed. Jesus is saying, cast them in the light. Cast them in the light. Bring them to the light. Okay? But he says this in the context of this guy Nicodemus saying, I'm going to kind of maybe secretly, so no one's going to really notice what I'm doing, go to Jesus at night. Right? I think that's significant. And he has legitimate questions too. Right? Right? Like this whole being born of um, the spirit, right, and and water, like, what does this mean? So this is is the context of what's going on. But here's another reason that I want to suggest that it's important to look at things in context, because you can take this verse, and we tend to do this in a way of talking about Jesus, you know, coming for us. People like me, that's who that love and light is for. The people to which I belong, not the people over there, not that group, that can become very also disconcerting, right? And that's not at all what Jesus represents or what our God represents. Jesus' light, Jesus' love is intended for everybody. Now, there's this very interesting story. This is paired with, obviously, there's a reference in the gospel to this first lesson we have from the Old Testament, right? This situation with the snake on us, hold it up, and what? Well, here's the deal. It's for all the Israelites to gaze at. We're making our way through Lent. 
How's that feeling? A little uncomfortable? Kind of sick of it? Good. <laughs> it's supposed to. It's supposed to. I'm not being flip about it. There's supposed to be a little bit of that going on, right? But we're not there yet. But here's where we're going. This is not a spoiler. Like, you know this. I'm not ruining anything, okay? This isn't you're hearing about Santa Claus and you're like, okay, you know where we're going. To the cross. On a hill. Jesus, who we gaze upon on that cross. Up there for us. Dead. Taken from that cross. Put in the tomb. Raised up. Easter. We're not there yet, but that's where we're going. To that place. That place is for everybody. Not just who I want to be in that group. Everybody. The world. So John 3, 17 Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This isn't some exclusive thing. The world. As much as we might not like that sometimes, if we're honest, as much as that might make us uncomfortable sometimes, if we're honest, for the world, for everybody. This love and light so expansive, we can't control it. We can't tame it. It is what it is. And the way it can transform us you know, is just remarkable. So I heard about this story. Going back a few years now, I think this was in 2020 when the, the accident happened. Uh, 76-year-old, her name's Rosie Miner. Rosie Miner was a minister in Atlanta. Uh, she worked with the Georgia Department of Corrections uh, counseling uh, inmates. Uh, she had started a mentorship program for... Um, young people, for adolescents, and uh, she's just going about her business one day in her car, and she gets hit by another car and killed. And this person was driving 73 in a 45, so she's charged with speeding, obviously, and vehicular homicide. Her name's Nakia, by the way. So Nakia uh, gets like a couple years probation, uh, 120 hours of community service, $2,500 fine, okay? Um, Stacy is the daughter of this person who got killed. Stacy says, I enjoyed watching her suffer, the person who was convicted of it. Like, I wanted her to suffer. In my anger and in my loss, that's what I wanted to have happen. Well, so then there's a civil trial that happens around all this, and um, it ends up being settled, whatever. But there, while that's going on... Um, the daughter goes to Nakia and says to her in the midst of all this, I forgive you. And the, the attorneys throughout this whole, they were like super cognizant of like the conflict. All the, they were like trying to keep them apart, just worried about what was going to happen. And she goes and she says, uh, I forgive you. Because in thinking about what my mom would want me to do, as a minister and kind of how I was brought up and how, 
I forgive you. And she said she felt almost like she was reborn in that moment. And then before she even kind of realized, like, I forgive you became I love you. So the person who caused the accident, like, I mean, she lost everything in this. She's living in a, a motel. Um, so the daughter starts paying, like, helping with rent, buying her food, became Secret Santa for her child. Um, and basically became almost like a godmother. And y'all, literally, they talk every day now. Because her thing is, I want her to, to like get her life back on track. Y'all, the love and light of Christ sometimes is just beyond. I, I have a hard time putting myself, honestly, in the place of, like, that level of forgiveness and love, that's what God's love can do. That's what the Jesus way can do. And it's for everybody. <laughs> it's for everybody. Whatever mistake we've made, it's for everybody. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of a, I have a favorite quote from uh, Flannery O'Connor. In the end, we will all be deeply offended by the mercy of God. <laughs> In the end, we will all be deeply offended by the mercy of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Amen. invite you to stand as you are able as we affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, the law that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, 
and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, for Kirk and Wesley, our priests, Julie, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have For the mission of the church, then in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have For the peace of the world leaders, remembering especially Joe, our president, and Brian, our governor, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have For those in positions of military trust, remembering especially Mary Owen, Justin, Kennedy, Carson, Andrew, and Hunt, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, remembering especially Anne, Amy, Mike, Jenna, Bill, Pat, B, Brad, Tiffany, Deb, Drew, Mimi, Beth, Mark, Hill, May, Kenneth, Rebe, Christina, Peter, Carla, Judd, Terry, Mary Jo, Margaret, Fred, Tim, Carl Lee, Susie, and Peggy. We pray to you, O Lord. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have For all who have died in the communion of your church, remembering especially John Burson, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord we give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, remembering especially Anna Jean, Carol, Kitty, Patty, Bobby, Catherine, and John. And for those celebrating anniversaries this week, remembering especially Sally and Mark. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed George, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I've gotten a lot more peace. Like, I'm like, Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome. 
Good to see. I was serious about the whole alarm clock thing. Good job. I get so apprehend nervous the night before. Like, is this gonna? Is my alarm gonna work? And um, y'all, I almost, I almost shared this. I told Julie about it. But there's a funny cartoon, and it's the and the interesting thing is the priest was male and the deacon's female in this little cartoon, and. The, the deacon is given the dismissal at the back of the church, and the priest is behind her coming into the church with the opening <laughs> acclamation. So I kept worrying that that was actually going to happen. Uh, but welcome. Hopefully you'll stay for coffee hour uh, today. And let me point out or highlight a few things uh, for this week and beyond. So no uh, Wednesday healing service this week. But we will have uh, our Wednesday Lenten Supper and program. And, uh, y'all, if you haven't been, I so encourage you uh, to come check this out. Uh, Wednesday, we will have guests from Midway Leadership. Uh, I think the whole board is coming. And uh, a couple folks who, and if you don't know about Midway, it's across the street. And it's a residential treatment center for uh, men with addiction issues. Okay. Um, and we will hear from a couple folks who had significant addiction issues and are in recovery from that. So you're going to hear some personal stories. Um, so come Wednesday night, we do Stations of the Cross if you're interested in that at 5, but we start uh, serving food at 5.15, program starts at 6, okay? That is this Wednesday. Um, Thanks to all who, at one of the various things, whether it was this morning, formation time, or Friday night, sip and seek, who got to meet Andrew Joyce from Love Must Act, um, and heard about the really remarkable work that organization is doing um, with the school in South Africa. Um, if you were unable to attend those events, that's okay. But very, very soon, uh, we will be seriously talking about when a group from St. George's will make that trip, or some possibilities for that, okay? So stay tuned for that. Okay, um, we're still in Lent. We're still in Lent, okay? Next Sunday, then the next Sunday is Palm Sunday, all right? So the beginning of Holy Week, um, let me tell you that that, that service, we start outside, so on Palm Sunday, this will be the 24th. For those who are able, this isn't a requirement, but we will start in the parking lot across the street. It's kind of tradition, and we've done this in the past in the courtyard, but I'm like, you know what? We're going a little more dramatic this year. I'm going to be honest with you. I was at a church, we, we did around the block. And people brought their own instruments, and it was like, we're jamming the whole way. We're parading into the church on that day. We'll be across the street, for those who can do that. We'll come in. Um, and it's just a very interesting service, because there's a kind of significant change in tone, because it's another reason I'm telling you this. Uh, on that day, uh, we read the Passion. And... We like, and it's just more fun, when that's read in parts, like a play, okay? So, do I have an opportunity for you to be a reader for the passion? Uh, the list is outside the parlor. Sign up. Take a part. Now, I'll just tell you, if you're the narr narrator's taken, never, don't worry about that. Jesus... We're probably going to ask you to be up here. You're kind of central to the story. Everyone else can read from their spot, y'all. So in all seriousness, we want to have different voices and think for that. So if you're at all willing and able to do that, please sign up. Lots of different parts. Y'all, in all seriousness, most of, the, most of the parts are like a line or two, okay, or just a few, which, again, you can read from your seat. So sign up for that. Also, also, now, there's so many ways you can be a part of the service. Here's the thing about Episcopal liturgy. 
Okay, it's not just the priest doing everything. It's very interactive. You know this. There are readers. There are ushers. There's a choir. Guess what else you're seeing? More young people serving as acolytes. Have you noticed? Yes. 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 I'm not trying to embarrass our torchbearers today, but this is important, y'all, to be a part of the service. I put something out this week about these people, you're called oblation bearers. When you bring to, and what's going to happen today, because I think no one signed up. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. (laughs) Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Um, At the offertory, so the ushers come up, they get the plates, they do, but in front of them, or what happens before that is bread and wine are brought forth from the back of the church all the way up and placed on the altar. They will then be blessed, consecrated, and you will consume them. Y'all, I don't want the ushers doing this. It's fine today, but I'm being very serious about this. This is a theological thing. This is a symbolic thing. You may be aware that pretty much everything in here and pretty much everything we do is symbolic of something we would say is very important. Here's what's important. Those gifts that are brought forth are from you, ultimately, the people. It's bread and wine. It's made by human hands. We're giving of that to go right there for that meal and transformed into something else. Beautiful and mysterious and amazing sustenance that we consume and exit. But, but to have members of the congregation carry them up, and yet literally here's what it means. There's a video that I did about this. You can watch this. But at, at, at the passing of the peace... You'd go to the back, ushers will hand you a couple things, and you literally walk up in front of them and hand those things off at the altar rail. That's what's involved. Please consider it. Couples, families, individuals. You see what I'm saying? Anybody? (laughs) Come on. Come on down. Let's go. Y'all, this was not staged at all. I'm not kidding. This just happened. (laughs) Wonderful. Now, others, consider it. Okay, on that email that I sent, I'll send it again. There's a link. Sign up. Pick a date. Okay, y'all, some churches just kind of nab people when they come in. So Kristen and I were often those, that couple, when we walked in, they'd be, hey, will you carry the oblation? This is before I, you know, it was this. We're encouraging people to sign up to do it, okay? So please, please uh, consider that. And with that, let us turn to the table. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> it is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. 
And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, (coughs) eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us spiritual food and most precious body and blood of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you. Man, look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
world, the Thanks Lord. Me.